All right, hey everyone. Well, we have got a copy of our VCarve Pro open, okay? We're going to walk you through step by step how to basically create your own bow tie with this particular software. As I've said in previous videos, this will also work in Aspire, which I, I certainly know will, and I'm pretty sure it may work in Cut 2D, but follow me along the best you can and hopefully you can apply what I'm showing you to any other software you might be using in particular, okay? we're going to look at our job setup for this particular piece of material I'm six inches wide I'm gonna be three and a half inches high is the actual area okay uh, that we're going to put this inlay into okay my datum position I always start in the middle my material thickness is gonna be a half an inch although what it's going into will be an inch deep we'll get into that in a minute and my unit of measurement is inches we're going to click OK, and we're going to start the job. OK, well, I'm going to make your conventional, everyday, run-of-the-mill looking bow tie, OK? I am going to do it by creating a, uh, let's see, we're going to go, we're going to go two inches by, we'll go by a half inch, OK? We're going to apply that. We're going to center this piece of material. I'm sorry. We're going to center. We're going to center this uh, this layout directly in the center of our workpiece. I'm sorry. It, it's a little early. All right. And then we're going to go out and we're going to build two two inch by two inch squares. Okay. Two inch by two inch. We're going to apply that. And that looks to be a little bit bigger. So I'm sorry. We're going to take it down to an inch and a half. Alrighty. Only because I know of the uh, the project that I'm doing here, that would be a little too big for what I I want to accomplish. All right. So we're gonna take this, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight all four corners. Now I am going to take and I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to my Align Selected Objects and I'm going to get this so that we can get our square perfectly lined up here on our horizontal line. Alright, great. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight him. I'm going to come down to Edit Objects, and I'm going to click on my Node Editing. It's going to light up all four corners. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to alleviate one of the nodes. I'm going to delete the point, okay? I'm going to come back over to my Edit Objects, to my Selection Mode, and I'm going to drag him over, okay, to the point of where my center square here is aligned perfectly on my horizontal line in my material and that my node is perfectly centered on my vertical line coming down this other rectangle I just built okay next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to copy and I'm going to paste this triangle and I'm gonna pull it over here now I'm going to go down to Transform Objects, Mirror Selected Objects, and I'm going to flip it to the left. Okay, I'm going to close that window. I'm going to highlight this back up. Now I can see that it's moved just a little bit. Okay, I'm basically trying to get my point right here so that everything lines up on this horizontal workpiece line. And give or take. That looks pretty good. Alrighty. So we're going to pull this bow tie in again here. I'm going to line him up. Now, the nice thing with doing this in CAD, now let me make sure that this one is lined up nice as well. That looks pretty good there. Everything looks good. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do. I'm going to highlight my rectangle. I'm going to come back down to Edit Objects and Node Editing. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
I'm going to right click, I'm going to delete the span here, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to delete the span here. Now the only thing that leaves me are my two horizontal lines left on this rectangle. Well, I am going to pull these in. I'm going to try not to uh, lose the angle of them. And I do want to keep them as close to this, this angled line coming off this triangle now as I can. We're going to come up here. Okay, we're going to do the same thing again. All right, let's minimize. Let's come over here. Same thing, pull this node all the way over. Keep it as close to the edge as you can, okay? And we'll, you'll see why in just a moment. Same thing. We're going to drag him over and drop him. All right, now I'm going to light up the, the angle on the triangle here. Now when my horizontal line comes in right here, I'm going to get as close as I can. I'm going to right click. I am going to insert a point. Let's minimize the screen out. I am going to come up here. Oh, let's, let's take and drag him over just a little bit. Okay. Now we'll bring him over a little bit more. And okay, now I'm going to come right here. I'm going to highlight my, my angle coming down on my triangle. I'm going to right click. I'm going to insert a point. Now what I'm going to do is the exact same thing on the other side. Okay. We'll take our angle coming down. Left click. You see like the little tilde key that's underneath your arrow? Line that up as close as you can on the angle coming down, right click, insert a point. Do the same thing at the bottom. Right click, I'm sorry, left click. Your little tilde key is lit up. The point of uh, the pointer is pretty, pretty as close as my eyes can see it. We're going to right click, we're going to insert a point. Now, with your node editor still in function, right click, delete your point, right click, delete your span. Do the exact same thing for the other side. Right click, delete point, right click, delete your span. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to come over to Edit Objects, Selection Mode, and we are now going to light up the entire bow tie. Now we're going to come down to edit objects one last time join open vectors. Okay I'm going to click join. You may have to adjust your tolerance okay we'll, we'll call it a hundred thousands on the tolerance which I know we won't need. We're going to click join. Alright now when you, uh, you go back into your edit mode you click on selection the whole thing is lit up. Now all your toolpaths are in place, okay? Well, with that being said, we're going to come actually over to the toolpath because now we're going to cut your toolpaths. I told you we were going to use the inlay toolpath. What this does is we're just going to be cutting straight uh, a straight pocket. So what we do is we click on your straight pocket. For this particular function, we're going to be using a quarter inch end mill. We come down to the end mill list and we click on end mill. The speeds that we're going to be cutting, this is going to be hardwood, so I'm going to slow these down so that the feed rate is at 60 inches per minute. My plunge rate is at 30 percent. Okay, I'm going to click apply. I'm going to click OK. Now this is for the physical, uh, this is the mail insert. Okay, we're going to want to add, we are certainly going to want to add some tabs to hold this in place from falling out. Okay, I am going to put in four tabs. We're going to add them. All right. Now I'm going to relocate them. I don't. I don't like anything close to a corner because I've always ended up sanding my corners off. I'm going to pretty much mount them in the middles. Okay. There they are. Now I'm going to close out that function. I know that we set the material thickness for 500 thousandths, so I'm going to go 0 
five. We'll go fifteen thousandths deeper than the material calls out for. I'm going to cut this on a conventional toolpath, okay? And now we're going to click calculate. Yes, it's going to cut through. We know that. Bang. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to, and I'm also going to change the color of this over to maple. It's a little bit lighter. It'll be a little bit easier to see. Okay, there we go. And we're going to preview this toolpath. Okay. So what we've just done and you'll notice that by using this toolpath function now, if we had cut a profile toolpath, which we'll show you that in just a second, the profile would cut, in fact, your angles perfectly square. By using the inlay toolpath, it automatically pre-configures this function, all right, and it does the radiuses for you. Well, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come back to your inlay toolpath function, Okay, we need to do the pocket. Now, this is where it gets interesting. I told you we were going to set the material for 500 thousandths. However, the pocket is going into a piece of one inch material. Now, if you want to keep your work to a minimal, the inlay that I'm using is going to be a piece of dark mahogany. It is 500 thousandths or a half inch thick. I'm going to pocket which is this toolpath right here, I am going to pocket into a piece of one inch maple. Now, let me set my depth on this pocket to point four hundred and eighty thousandths, because what's going to happen now is the key or the bow tie or the butterfly inlay, whatever you choose to call it, the Dutchman, okay, it's only going to go in four hundred and eighty thousandths. Twenty thousandths of that is going to stick up. That's going to be nothing to sand off. You can, you can hit it with a belt sander real quick. Some guys, they may opt to run it through a planer. Okay, I don't. With the CNC, you have complete control over what you're doing. Okay? So, we're going to take, uh, because this is just a pocketing toolpath like any other pocket, we are going to select our end mill again. My speed is... is is locked in from the last uh, from the last setting. I click OK. I click Calculate. Okay. Let's reset our preview, and we're gonna we're gonna look at just the visible toolpath here. Okay. So this is going to mill out our pocket. And if we just bear with me for one more second, this should be done. Okay, now we have our we have our we have our pocket done. We can see on the horizontal view that we are four hundred and eighty thousandths into our material on a one inch piece of material. Okay, although it's showing because we've got the job set up at a half inch, okay? It's showing that we're we're just about pretty close to the bottom. However, our pocket is going into one inch thick. Now, if I went out, and I will show you this real quick, if I did a profile toolpath to make the key, okay, and I went for my key, your key is uh, your key or your butterfly is the piece that's cut out, and I went my same 515 thousandths on that half inch key or, or bow tie, okay, and let's put four tabs on this one as well. Oh, they're already pre-configured. There we go. Uh, under a profile toolpath, this is what would happen. Okay, let's reset and let's preview that visible toolpath. Okay, it's going to go around. I know it's slow sometimes. This is not the fastest computer either, so... Alrighty. Now you can see what I'm talking about. And this is going to be shown in the blog as well, okay? This is basically, with a profile toolpath, you have these sharp points. This is not going to work. It's not going to fit in right. And even if you were to take a sander and try to do the radiuses yourself, 
they're not going to come out right. You're going to be disappointed and you're going to be backfilling this project with wood filler and sanding it down. And Okay? I just wanted to show you this as an example. Now, we'll, uh, we'll conclude this video by saying thank you guys for, uh, for watching. And uh, most of these shapes and how we just built this one little simple bow tie, you can change your shapes to squares, to circles, to little hearts, whatever you want. Provided you run it under the inlay toolpath, it will do your two functions properly every time. Okay? Alright, well guys, thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see you soon. Alright, bye bye.